Hi, welcome back. I'm Dr. Stephanie C. Holmes. And today I want to talk about where are where are the books and podcasts and resources for neurodiverse Christian couples. Um, if you've been on this YouTube channel a little bit, perhaps you know that my husband and I are um, co-host of the podcast Neurodiverse Christian Couples. But what about books? Are there any books out there for neurodiverse Christian couples? You might be noticing that there are um, several books coming on the market about autism or Asperger's and adults and relationships, but um, really focusing on autism, marriage, and faith. Um, there is nothing out there. And Dan and I and some contributing authors, we are in process right now of changing that. So I'm not going to give the title of the book away yet because it's still not copyrighted and it's still not fully in publication. Um, but Dan and I with contributing authors are going to be doing um, the first book on the market about autism, faith, and marriage. It will cover um, our personal lived experience as well as lived experience um, from those authors who are contributing, as well as research and personal narratives and stories of those who contributed um, stories to the book. So let me kind of um, walk you through what will be in the book. So we will start the book on what is neurodiversity, what is autism, and what it's not. Um, sometimes in the Christian um, spaces, we want to hyper focus on hyper spiritual things and labels, and we don't do labels. And um, I've heard autism is a spirit, or autism is a demon, or we have to pray the autism away, or uh, pray your brain um, is um, fixed from the autism. And so we really want to talk about um, neurologically um, what's going on, what's the difference, what are the strengths, and what are the challenges. Well, we really want to talk about what it is and what it is not. So really educate some of our um, Christian and faith believers. So next, we will kind of start with uh, some of the uh, research that we did do in 2023. And you've, you've seen little snippets of that in some of these YouTubes. And that is from the perspective of the person on the spectrum. We'll look at uh, what was that diagnosis journey like. We will share some uh, people's stories of their journeys um, from denial to shock to acceptance um, and how they got through the acceptance of that adult diagnosis, especially later in life. It's sometimes difficult when you're an adult and you've had um, a successful career, you were successful in school, um, to ponder that there might be this um, difference there. So we'll start there, like what happened, what's changed in the diagnostic criteria, what does the research show us, um, all that good stuff. And then we'll move into what does marital satisfaction look like from the partner or spouse who is on the autism spectrum. And then we'll look at what does marriage satisfaction look like from the non-autistic or neurotypical partner. And so we're going to see a, um, a differing views on what's happening and um, how we even define satisfaction and then why is there such a discrepancy in, in the satisfaction? Um, then we will move into navigating some of the different things, um, the similarities and the differences among the different types of neurodiverse couples. So for the contributing authors um, and my husband and I in our coaching practice, we usually see the typical presentation of a man who is on the spectrum and a woman who is not. But there are, of course, different types um, of neurodivergent couples. Um, and in chapter four, we will be talking about what about um, a woman is on the spectrum and the man is not, or a double neurodivergent couple, meaning both are on the spectrum. And in one of our chapters, we'll briefly introduce another type of double neurodivergence, maybe when one spouse is ADHD and one spouse is um, on the spectrum. So we'll also talk about the neuroscience and neuroplasticity. If you follow me um, either on the podcast or YouTube, you know I'm very much a fan of Dr. Jim Wilder and neuroplasticity brings us hope. Like what are the things that we can change in our brain? We can change our joy center, our identity center, our relational circuits. And we'll um, talk about the brain science um, on neurology, what can change and what um, cannot change. And we'll move into those things. What is change? What is accommodation? What is modifications? What are strategies? Um, if we're both ready to do our work, we're both taking individual responsibility and we uh, want to do our marriage work, we both believe that we are a neurodiverse couple, then let's talk about what are those things that can be learned, tools, skills, accommodations, when do we know how to use them? So one of our contributing authors, and she's also been a guest on our podcast, Barbara Grant, MMFT, Certified Autism Specialist, she will be talking about growth and change, um, our motivation and boundaries, and how that will, and how this goes through um, acceptance and healing. 
Um, then another contributing author, Carol Reller, um, who is a former um, SLP or speech language pathologist, will talk to us about the, the maze and the challenges of our social communication, how um, those on the spectrum and those who are not on the spectrum use language differently and common communication mishaps that can happen in neurodiverse couples with some strategies and suggestions um, for building better communication skills. Then we'll move into another common issue where it's not going to change, but there are certainly some accommodations, modifications, and different expectations around executive function. Robin Tate, um, who is also a certified autism specialist, and she specializes in the combination of ADHD and autism. She will uh, really further explain what is executive function, where are their challenges, um, what's maybe a challenge to the individual, and how does a couple um, approach this new way of looking at things together. Then we will look at um, another um, person of diagnosis, acceptance. Um, I really like um, Jeremy Rochford is gonna talk about pre-regulation um, for those who become dysregulated, um, how instead of focusing on just aftermath of the dysregulation, how do we regulate, how do we stay regulated and what is pre-regulation? Jeremy will also talk about curiosity and that your marriage is either better than you imagined or worse than you expected, that you get to make that choice. Um, Jeremy Rochford is um, on the spectrum and him and his wife form Team Rochford and they co-wrote one on parenting, parenting and the importance of teamwork, especially as a neurodiverse couple in a neurodiverse family system with neurodivergent children. So then we will um, end that section with an, um, what about people of color and stigma and the challenges that those, um, those who are of color may face in either diagnosis acceptance of the diagnosis in the community, and then some biases that professionals may have against um, giving a proper diagnosis and um, protocols to people of color. So after we finish that section, we have to talk about some very difficult things that can go wrong. And with neurodiverse Christian couples, one thing that's slightly different than neurodiverse couples without faith is when rules and religion and roles um, um, are very black and white and inflexible, uh, may be combined with um, uh, wrong thinking about marriage doctrine, how not only is that um, unhealthy to the relationship, but it can lead to abuse, especially when scripture is wielded in ways that become weapons instead of being a sword of truth. It becomes a weapon uh, to use against your spouse. So we'll talk about what are those common scriptures that are usually twisted and um, can form abuse. And then um, another contributing author, Reverend Ira Snap, who is also a life coach um, who specializes in her groups on healing from abuse from a neurodiverse Christian marriage. You will hear um, sadly many stories of women um, who came forward, who wanted to share their stories um, that within the marriage, there was either financial, which is very common, um, physical, which is less common, emotional, psychological, and especially spiritual abuse that can occur in a neurodiverse Christian marriage. We will invite you um, to take your next step and to know that you're ready for your next step. It's very important. Leslie Vernick says that there are marriage issues and there are individual issues. Addiction and adultery, they cause marriage issues, but that's not a marriage problem. So before you even begin your marriage work, before you reach out to a coach, if there is trauma and abuse in the relationship, that needs to be dealt with first. If there is addiction of any kind, substance, alcohol, use or abuse, if there is porn or sexual addiction, those things really need to be worked on before you start doing your marriage work because those things are individual issues and uh, marriage coaches and people who are focusing on specifically your marriage are not licensed sex therapists, are not licensed sexual addiction therapists. And so it's important to know um, sometimes when people get newly identified, they want to jump right into their marriage work. But there might be other steps, other things you need to do before you make that step to work on um work on your marriage. I'm excited to tell you about another book that will be coming out. Um, so both of the books, um, our book with our contributing authors will be coming out hopefully in summer of 2024. And there's a second book also, I don't know if he has his copyright in place yet, so I won't give the name of the book, but I will tell you his name is Brian Height. And Brian Height has a career dedicated to servicing marine and laboratory electronics, where he honed his understanding of technically intricate systems 
Outside of his work, his passions include hiking, electronics, clay and stone carving, forming a blend of technical precision and creative exploration. He lives in New Zealand with his wife, Sheila, and has one daughter. He is a Christian and um, a man on the spectrum. And you can find um, upcoming information about his book if you want to watch his launch at www.faithandpractice.nz. I want to read a blog that he has written for me. And this also comes from his book to give you a little taste of what's in the book. So let me uh, read accordingly. This is from Brian. My marriage doomsday clock was 235957, and I was asleep and unaware of my world. At 235958, a sense of unease roused me, but I was unable to identify the cause. As the clock flickered at 235959, 59, I woke to the harsh reality with my marriage was about to collapse and explode. I didn't know what would happen, but I suddenly knew I was part of the problem. If my marriage was going to survive, I had to change my attitude and my actions. Unintentional, unintentionality had crept into every part of my life, especially my marriage, but I wasn't completely unaware of the damage it was causing. But I was completely unaware of the damage it was causing. I knew that things were not going well, but I didn't know why. I blame my wife because she was the person who was complaining. If she would complain less, I thought we'd be fine. It never occurred to me that I had the plank in my eye and was complaining about a speck in her eye. I was praying for her to change, but never thought to pray to God to show me what I needed to change. Added to my mind and emotional blindness, I was spiritually blind. All this changed when I was listening to a podcast about arrogance. I realized this was one of my core attitudes and that I had everything backwards. As I pondered my lifetime of passive actions, I saw that they came from resentful attitudes. So that became the first intention change. My attitudes had focused my thoughts, which in turn formed my actions. I had to own the damage I had caused the relationship. Instead of wanting to change my wife, I realized I had to change me. In fact, I was the one person I could change. Intentionality became the driving force, which started with my attitude and steadily expanded to my interactions with my wife and the world around me. The new realization brought new thinking. I started focusing on what I could do to build our relationship. I spent time thinking of practical ideas, which would build us together. I essentially developed a relationship toolbox, which included practical activities we could do with mental and emotional habits and practices that focus my, on myself and growth and change. Passivity had been an anchor that stopped all growth and forward moving in the relationship. Cutting that anchor rope was essential. Doing it was liberating. Being on the autism spectrum helped me excel at work, but I couldn't use it as an excuse for being passive or negligent in my marriage because I knew my attitude had done more damage than my neural wiring. My nature, I am predisposed to logical thinking, so I leveraged that skill set to benefit my relationship. I made intentional choices to respond to my wife so that I could meet her relational needs. For, in, for instance, I used timers on my phone to remind me of tasks that needed to be done or to remind me of special events that were coming up and that needed preparation. I actively looked for ways to build positivity into the relationship. I know I can't make up for years of indifference in a moment, nor can I expect my wife to forget all my past actions. For this reason, my journey of intentionality became my new special project, one which must continue for the rest of my marriage and the whole of my life. So again, check that out. Both books, um, This Marriage on Intentionality in Marriage, this book on intentionality in marriage by Brian Height and um, Autism, Faith, and Marriage um, with Dan and I and contributing authors. It will be, our book will be the first book to talk about autism and marriage from a Christian faith perspective. Every author in our book has a personal relationship with Jesus Every author is professionally trained um, in coaching um, or previously counseling um, on, as autism aware and trained and has a personal lived experience, either as a person on the spectrum, married to someone on the spectrum or a mother or grandmother of someone on the spectrum. So for our book, check us out at www.christianneurodiversemarriage.com. Um, there will be a little icon there if you want to follow the countdown as to when our book is coming out. And please check out Brian Height's book, which I think is going to be great. Um, for those of you who are really seeking, if you are a man on the spectrum who is also um, of the Christian faith, I think you will find the book insightful, helpful, practical, 
And maybe there's some things you can change about attitudes and your intentionality um, to build an intentional marriage. Um, thank you for joining me for this segment today. I decided I, I wish I was at the beach right now because it's really cold outside. So um, hope you love being with me today here at our fake beach as we talk about some resources that are coming up for you and for your marriage. <music>